So section 7.4 is where we start putting all the things together. We're going to find a common denominator. We're going to convert to a common denominator. And then we're going to do the addition or subtraction that goes along with the problem. So we'll begin with problem number 14. And we've got denominators of 6 and 7. So it's just a quick, simple thing to try and figure out an LCD. And we talked about that at length in section 7.3. Another thing you can do to find the LCD, especially when you have numbers, is just list a bunch of things, like they're the multiples of this number, so 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, etc. And then do likewise with this one, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, and we can stop here because we finally found one that's in common. So 42 is going to be your lowest common denominator. But we need to convert each of these things to have that LCD. So 5 over 6 plus 4T over 7. I want to write that as something over 42. And this is something over 42. So how can I do that? Well, the trick is going to be to multiply by 1. If you look at this denominator, what times 6 gives you 42? Well, the answer is 7. So I'll multiply this by 7. But if I multiply the denominator by 7, I have to multiply the numerator by 7. So the net effect is I'm multiplying by 1. I'm multiplying by 7 over 7. In the numerator, that gives me 35t. Let's do likewise over here. This time, I need to multiply by 6. 6 times 7 gives me 42. 6 times 4 gives me 24, so that's 24t. Now that these have common denominators, I can add the numerators. That gives me 59t over 42. Now, if there was some simplification you could do, I would expect that done. But 42 and 59 are relatively prime. There's no common factors, so you can leave it like that. If it bothers you that the numerator is bigger than the denominator, you could rewrite this. 42 goes into 59 once with a remainder of 17. So 1 and 17 over 42 times t. But this is really good enough. Let's try that again with problem number 18. Now, sometimes you're going to be really good at spotting what the LCD is. And if you can do that, that's fine. You're not going to get extra points for showing all this kind of work, although it does help me give you partial credit in the event that you get a problem wrong. Problem number 18 is one of those problems where maybe you can see what the LCD is right away. 15 over 16a minus 3 over 4a squared. So our LCD is going to have to combine a couple elements. We're going to have to find an LCD for the numbers as well as the variables. Let's do that part for the numbers first. Multiples of 4 would be 4, then 8, then 12, then 16, and then 20. And hopefully at this point you realize, gee, I can stop. Because 16 is going to be part of your LCD. Now the other part of your LCD is going to be the variables. So that is, you look at these and you pick the highest power that they have. Don't add them. Don't do 1 plus 2 is 3. I want 16a squared. So how are we going to work that then? Well, kind of like our previous one, we're going to need to multiply by 1. Compare what we have in our LCD to what we have in our denominators. This is our LCD. What am I missing here that I have here? That's right. The answer is an a. So I'll multiply by a over a. Notice I'm doing the same thing to the numerator and the denominator. Likewise, over here, well, I've got my a squared, but I need to beef this up a little bit. I've only got a 4 here. I have a 16. So what do I multiply by this time? Good job. 4 over 4. If I do that, I've got... 15a over 16a squared minus 12 
over 16a squared. These have common denominators. I can subtract the numerators, 15a minus 12 over 16a squared. There's not much more you could do. If you really wanted to, you could factor out a 3. But since that 3 doesn't give you any more cancellation with the denominator, we're just going to leave it. Leave it like this. Let's move on to problem number 22. I'm going to continue doing it this way. Sometimes you'll be able to see LCDs, sometimes you won't. In the first one, it just turned out that it was the product of these two. In this one, if you take the product of the two denominators, you're going to work with an LCD, which is bigger than you really need. It's going to be more work. So let's follow through our work on finding the LCD. 7 over 8b squared minus 5 over 6b cubed. Like before, let's find the LCD in two parts. The first part is to work with the denominators in the terms of the numbers, so 6 and 8. Multiples of 8 would include 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and so on. Multiples of 6 would include 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. So there's a lot of common multiples. There's common multiples at 48. But the lowest common multiple, and the one that we want to work with, is back here at 24. So 24 is going to be part of our LCD. What else is going to be part of our LCD? Well, you got to look at the variables. You remember what I said just a minute ago? You want to choose the highest degree of the exponents. Don't add them and get 5. Just say, look at this one. That one's bigger than this one. The LCD is going to be 24B cubed. Let's keep that in mind as we work on this one. Comparing this, this denominator to this, what am I missing? Well, I need to multiply 8 by 3 to get the 24, so I'll need a 3 in both the numerator and denominator. And I'm missing one of the b's. So a b here and a b here. Likewise over here. Well, I'm good on the b's. I've got three b's here, got three of them here. What I need to do is beef up the 6. I need to figure out what to multiply 6 by to get 24. And yes, the correct answer is 4. Let's put both of those together. This times this gives me 24b cubed. In the numerator, I get 21b. Over here, I get 20 over 24b cubed. I have the same denominators, so I can combine the numerators over that same denominator. And we're done. Cranked out three just like that. Any questions on this first one? No? Looking good there? All right. Let's make them a little bit more challenging. Come up with denominators that are a little bit more like the majority of stuff you would see on an exam. Problem 24 is a good example. 5 over p squared minus 9 plus 2 over 3p plus 9. Well, now that these are getting a little bit harder, let's review what we have to do in the case that these denominators aren't the same. So adding fractions. Rational expressions would be better, but we'll keep it friendly here. Adding fractions. First, determine the LCD. We have to start by figuring out well, what's the LCD. From there, after we determine the LCD, convert each fraction to have the LCD. Convert each fraction to the LCD. 
And finally, finish by adding and subtracting. Add slash subtract. And look for additional simplification. For additional simplification. Sometimes you'll find it, and if it's there, I'm going to need you to do it. If not, no big deal. But you should always look for it. To determine the LCD, the first thing you're going to have to do is factor these denominators. Factoring the initial one here, hopefully you recognize this as the difference of squares. P minus 3 times P plus 3. What would you do to factor this one? Hopefully, in your mind, you have ingrained that the first thing you always try to do when you factor is factor out the G GCF. In this case, a 3. So we get something that looks like that. Okay, that's the first step in factoring, excuse me, the first step in finding an LCD. If you need some more practice in that, go back and look at the video for section 7.3. Okay, so we've got it factored. The second step in this kind of process is to list all the different factors. I know some of you want to do it in your head, but follow me on this one. Let's list all the different factors. There's a P minus 3. So P minus 3. There's a P plus 3 here and here. So P plus 3. And there's a 3. Now notice I didn't list P plus 3 twice. Even though I see it in both denominators, that's fine. It's just enough to list it once. The LCD is going to be the product of the highest power of each of these factors. So, well, where's the power? Well, it's not really written because it's understood to be a 1. This is to the first power. This is to the first power. All these terms are to the first power. So your LCD is just the product of all these things. It's going to be, let's start out with a 3 times P minus 3 times P plus 3. You can write it in any order. It's just convenient to have the 3 out in front. There's your LCD. So let's work with that. Compare each of these to the LCD now that we have it factored. What am I missing here that I have in my LCD? What's missing from this denominator that I have here? Yes, the answer is a 3. So let's go back up here and multiply this by 3 over 3. How about this one? What am I missing here that I have down here? The answer in this case is a P minus 3. So let's do P minus 3 here. How does that simplify? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. So I'll have 15 over 3 times P minus 3 times P plus 3. By the way, don't bother multiplying that all out. Just leave it as is. Plus 2p minus 6, just distributing the 2 here, over 3 times p plus 3 times p minus 3. Finally, we've got like terms. We can add their numerators. The 15 and the negative 6 are going to combine to give me a 9. So I'll get 2p plus 9 over 3 times p plus 3 times p minus 3, and that's it. We're done. Leave it like this. Do not bother multiplying it back out, because if this in the numerator happened to be a 3, I could factor out the 3 and get some more cancellation. But here, this doesn't factor, so I don't get any more cancellation. No big deal, but like I said, look for that extra cancellation. Let's move on to problem number 26. 
2 over 5b minus 3 plus 5 over 25b squared minus 9. So kind of like the last one, I've got to determine what the LCD is. And in that regard, one of the things you should be, be getting used to is something that I've said a while, is to factor. 2 over 5b minus 3 is already factored. But 25b squared minus 9, hopefully you have in mind your steps towards factoring. There's no GCF. There's one, two terms, so it has to be one from this list. It's not the sum of squares. It's not the sum of cubes, so it has to be one of these two. And since we've got a 25 and a 9, it's, it's looking pretty much like the difference of squares. 5b minus 3 times 5b plus 3. Now maybe in this one, you can kind of look at things and run through that LCD checklist real quickly. You've got it factored. You list all the different factors. The different factors are going to be 5b minus 3 and 5b plus 3. And then you multiply together the highest power of each factor. Well, guess what? The highest power of each factor, just like the last one, is 1. Basically, this denominator here is your LCD. But I'd rather you write it like this because it's a little bit easier to work with in the long run. This already has our LCD. This one doesn't, so I'll multiply by 5b minus 3 over 5b minus 3. If we distribute that term here, then what would that give me? That gives me 10b minus 6 over 5b minus 3 times 5b plus 3 plus 5 over the same denominator, and now I can add the numerators. If you're good and you want to skip from this step to our final answer, hey, I understand that. 10, excuse me, 10b, negative 6, and 5 gives me negative 1 over 5b minus 3 times 5b plus 3. Leave the denominator factored. I'd prefer it that way. But it also helps you in case there's some extra simplification there. Let's try problem number 32 next. 2 over m minus 3 plus 7 over m minus 4. This would be a good kind of a test problem here for us. And the thing that people get mixed up on quite a lot is they don't realize that this is one whole term that the lowest common denominator is not m minus 12 or something like that, that you still have to run through your same basic steps. So as far as the LCD is concerned, you're going to factor both of those denominators. Well, that's already done. Next step is to list all the different factors, m minus 3, comma, m minus 4. And then the final step is to multiply together the highest power of each factor. Now, do you have to do this like that? No. I'm just trying to reinforce how you find the LCD in case you're struggling with that. Now, after we find the LCD, we need to convert each of these to have that LCD. What do I have here that's part of my, or what am I missing here that's part of my LCD? Here's my LCD. Well, I'm missing the m minus 4. So let's introduce that. I'll multiply by m minus 4 over m minus 4. Likewise, over here, I'm missing the m minus 3. m minus 3 over m minus 3. When I distribute here, I'll get 2m minus 8 over m minus 4 times m minus 3 plus 
7m minus 21 over m minus 4 times m minus 3. Are there shortcuts you can take here? Sure. If you can do some of this in your head, in fact, maybe some of you could have done this step in your head and gone to the last step, that's great. 7 and 2 gives me 9, 9m minus 29 over m minus 4 times m minus 3. Now let's poke fun at this for just a second. A lot of times I'll see people do something like this. They work really hard, they get a common denominator, or they convert to a common denominator like this, like we just did, m minus 4, m minus 4, and m minus 3 over m minus 3, like this. So you start out here, you get your common denominator, and then, then what happens? People are like, ooh, look, hey, I can cancel this. I can cancel that. Great. Well, is it great? Well, not really, because you're back where you started. You don't have common denominators anymore. So, wow, you're running in a circle. I know it's tempting, but try and avoid that temptation. Here is your final answer. Nothing here factors, so there's no extra cancellation. But there will be some problems that have that. Just be aware of it. Let's move on to problem number 38. Now these videos are going to get, this is going to be the longest of the videos that I'm going to do in this chapter. So maybe you want to take yourself a little bit of a break. Go check your voicemail or something like that. Come back in a few minutes. Stretch a little bit. But there's a lot more in this section. So make sure you're fresh. Don't try and cram it all in at once. But do take good notes. Problem 38. 2x over x plus 2 minus x plus 1 over x minus 3. By now, I think you're probably getting used to figuring out the LCD. You can run through those steps. The LCD in this one is just going to be the product of these two. So it's going to be x plus 2 times x minus 3. We'll discuss other examples like that more at length again. So if you're still struggling with that, please get some help or... Come see me for some help. What am I missing here that I have in my LCD? The x minus 3 term. So x minus 3. x minus 3. Likewise, with the second fraction, I'm missing the x plus 2 term. So x plus 2 or x plus 2. And I'm carefully putting parentheses around these terms here. I should do likewise with this denominator. In the numerator, I'm going to distribute. I'll get 2x squared minus 6x. In the numerator over here, I can FOIL this out. I'll get x squared plus 2x plus x. What's plus 2 plus 1? Now that's going to be plus 3. So if you wanted to take your time a little bit more in foiling that out, that's fine. In fact, you know what? Just to make sure I don't lose anyone, let's do that up here. It's going to be x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2. And when you combine like terms, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And that's what we got here. The tricky thing here is that you're subtracting this whole term. So when I put this together, it's not enough just to put it together like this. 2x squared minus 6x minus x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over this denominator, x minus 3 times x plus 2. This would be wrong. 
Can you see what's wrong with that? What's wrong is you have to subtract this entire numerator. And what that means is that you need to distribute that negative sign to all of those terms. Not just the first one, but to all of them. So the correct version of this should be 2x squared minus 6x minus x squared minus 3x minus 2 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. There's like terms that we can cancel here in the numerator, 2x squared and minus x squared, gives me an x squared, minus 6x and minus 3x gives me a minus 9x, nothing's in common here so it's just a minus 2 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. Whew. All right, get out the oxygen bottle. That one was a long one. Any questions so far on problem 38? Looking good still? Okay. Well, hang with me. We're about halfway done. Let's just check that we've got some sound here. Do a little... Oh, try this. Sound check. Yep, still recording. Still got sound, so that's good. Problem number 42. I'm going to write this with X's as opposed to T's because X's, or excuse me, T's start to look a lot like pluses. 3 over X squared plus X minus 6 plus 1 over X squared plus 3X minus 10. Like a lot of these, we got to start by determining the common denominator. That effort starts with factoring these things. So maybe you can pause the video and see if you can't beat me with the factorization. We need two things that multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 1. So numbers of 3 and 2 might jump out at you. The positive 1 has to be this sign. The larger of them has to have this sign. That gives this one for the smaller one is negative. Likewise, over here, two numbers that you might think of would be 2 and 5. The larger of those two has to have this sign. So that has to be a plus, that has to be a minus. As far as the LCD is concerned, we've got this thing factored. So that's done. Let's list all the different terms that we see in this factorization. Well, there's an x plus 3. <clears throat> x plus 3. What else is there? There's an x minus 2. I have that twice, but I only have to list it once. And finally, there's an x plus 5. If you multiply together all these three terms, I'll get x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 5. The highest degree of each of these that you see in any of these denominators is to the first power. So all to the first power, that's my LCD. Having conquered that, let's squeeze in what's left in order to determine or in order to get an LCD. So here's my LCD. From this denominator I'm missing the x plus 5 term. So I'll multiply by x plus 5 over x plus 5. And then over here I'm missing the x plus 3 term. So let's squeeze that in x plus 3 over x plus 3. And now I can distribute this in the numerator. I'll get 3x plus 15. And this is kind of long here, so let me just get a little bit lazy. And let me write LCD. 
plus x plus 3 times 1 is just x plus 3 over the LCD. Since these have common denominators, I can add their numerators. 3x plus x is 4x plus 18 over x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 5. And that's pretty much it. If you look at that and so, say, well, wait a minute, wait, wait, we can factor the numerator. You're right. I can factor out a 2 from the numerator. That will leave behind 2 times 2x plus 9 over x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 5. But is there any extra cancellation here? No, there's not. It's always good to look for it. There will be some that have that extra cancellation, but it's not in this one. Let's do a couple that aren't just kind of the same drill and kill as the last few. And that is, let's take a look at problems like number 52. So the idea behind 52 is, we're going to see if we can't save ourselves a little bit of effort. And one thing that I want to note for you before we do problem 52 is something like this. Suppose I had negative 12 divided by 4. This negative can be rewritten in several places. I can write that negative out in front, like that, or I could write the negative in the denominator. There's three places I can write the negative, but no matter where I write it, this quotient is always equal to negative 3. It always equals the same thing. So depending on my convenience, I can take a negative here, write it out in front, or negative out in front, and write it in the numerator. And that's the little heads up that I want to give you on problem 52. Problem 52 itself looks like this, b, minus, b over b minus 6 plus b over 6 minus b. Now these aren't like denominators. You can do a whole lot of work and say, okay, well, the LCD is going to be b minus 6 times 6 minus b. Then you have to convert each of these to the LCD. Wow, it'd be a real mess. If you look closely, though, there's not a huge difference between these two. In fact, this is positive, that's negative. This is negative, that's positive. So they really only differ by a negative sign. So let's see what we can do to work with that. Suppose I factored out a negative from this. That would leave behind b minus 6. And you can verify that this and this are equivalent. In fact, let me underline it. This and this are equivalent. Let's see that. If I distribute this here, I would get negative b, which I have here, and the negative of negative 6 is positive 6. So these two things are equivalent. Now let's use this idea up here. Instead of writing the negative here, let me write it up in the numerator. So it's going to be b over b minus 6 plus negative b over b minus 6. That's great. Why is that great? It's because I've got common denominators now. So what happens when I add these together? What do I get in the numerator? And if you said 0, you nailed it. You got it correct. The answer is 0. Now, the real problem in the book had a 4 here. That's okay. I kind of liked ours a little bit better. The thing that I want you to see is factoring out that negative, what we did. And there's two things I did here. I changed the order of the terms, and I changed the sign on both those terms. Positive 6 became negative 6. Minus b became plus b. So let's practice that one again. We'll do that this time with problem number 54. 
a over 5a minus 3b minus b over 3b minus 5a. Again, you've got two denominators that are just begging to be combined, but they're in a slightly different order. So see if you can pause the video and do something like what we did here. Try and flip the order of those two things. See what you can come up with. All right. Time's up. What would you come up with? Well, you should have factored out a negative and switched the order. So that would be a positive 3b minus 5a. The term in the numerator is still going to be a b. Now what happens? These two things can cancel each other out. Or you can put the negative up here. Either way, you're either going to have a minus negative b, or just bring this out in front and make that a plus. a over 5a minus 3b plus b over 5a minus 3b. And so our final answer is a plus b over 5a minus 3b. Nice. A lot less effort, trust me, a lot less effort than rewriting this with a common denominator, which unless you rewrite it, your common denominator has to be the product of this times this. Way, way less work. Now there's some tricks in the next couple. And we'll see we'll see this problem. Let's see this trick one more time with uh, problem number 64. h over h squared minus 49 plus 7 over 49 minus h squared. Again, just begging for a little bit of rework. Rewriting that, h squared minus 49 What's going to happen here? Can you rewrite it for me? Factor out that negative. It's going to change the sign and change the order. h squared minus 49. For my convenience, I'm going to kick that negative up to the numerator. So you can just do it by crossing it out like this. I want you to be able to look back and see my steps, so I'll write it like this h over h squared minus 49 plus negative 7 over h squared minus 49. Nice. These now have common denominators. I can combine the numerators. I get h minus 7 over h squared minus 49. Now we haven't had to deal with this up until now. But I've consistently said, you know, you got to look for that extra factorization and cancellation. And this time, there is some. How does the denominator factor? Well, again, you've got the difference of squares here. h minus 7 times h plus 7. Finally, we see that it wasn't just blowing smoke. That Occasionally, you do get extra cancellation there. Those cancel and leave me 1 over h plus 7. Let's try problem number 80. We're almost done. Probably three more, maybe, and then we can finish this up and you'll be going. So for those of you who are enduring this, a um, little possible bonus point here, and that is in your notes, you can show me a little note about where I was at last Thursday night. So there you go. There's yours truly, and I'll give you a really big clue.
course, you might recognize this place. And let me zoom in. Math nerd that I am, I have pie in the back of my jersey, but that's hockey town. So write that in your notes someplace. All right, good for you for staying with me this long. Almost done. Problem number 80. A couple ways you can do problem number 80. And 80's got a little star by it in my notes. Uh, we'll go through both methods. The first approach, kind of a brute force approach, but it works. Just like usual, you're going to start by figuring out what the LCD is. And to do that in, we need to factor this. So this factors as y minus 3 times y plus 3. The first denominator is already factored. It's y minus 3. That's one whole term there. Minus 2y minus 6 over y plus 3 times y minus 3. If you run through your little checklist of things to do when finding the LCD, first thing is to factor every denominator. We've got that done. List all the different factors. There's a y plus 3 and a y minus 3. If you multiply together the highest power of each, our LCD is just going to be y plus 3 times y minus 3. Okay. y plus 3 times y minus 3. That means... From this term, I'm missing the y minus 3. So let's squeeze it in here. y minus 3 times y, or over y minus 3. Now don't cancel those because we wouldn't have common denominators anymore. Instead, we can distribute here. In the numerator, I get y squared minus 3y over y plus 3 times y minus 3. Minus, this hasn't changed, 2y minus 6 over y plus 3 times y minus 3. The difficult part is to be careful when you subtract here. When I subtract, that negative sign has to distribute itself to both of those terms. That's why I added those parentheses in purple there. So yeah, this is a long problem. y squared minus 3y minus 2y minus and a minus gives me a plus 6. And boy, if you miss that plus 6, if you make it a minus 6, it just throws everything off. That's really unfortunate. The denominator is still y plus 3 times y minus 3. I've got like terms here. y squared minus 5y plus 6 over y plus 3 times y minus 3. Last but not least, this still factors. Told you in problem 64 and a lot of the other ones, you have to look for that extra factorization, and here we're going to find it. I need two numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add to negative 5. So while I'm writing this down, maybe you can think about those things. What does the sign have to be for both of these terms? If this is positive, you get a positive by multiplying two positives together or by multiplying two negatives together. And finally, two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5 are 2 and 3. Wow, look at that. Those cancel, we're left with y minus 2 over y plus 3. Give yourself a pat on the back if you're still with me at this point. Good job on you. To review this one, I started out by figuring out the greatest common or the lowest common denominator. It was y plus 3 times y minus 3. I only had to adjust this one. This one already had the common denominator. So I multiply by that missing factor, distribute that. The thing that I had to be careful of is this. I 
have to be careful to distribute the negative sign to both of those terms. So I get a minus 2y and a plus 6y. When I combine like terms, this factored and gave me a little bit more cancellation. Now there is one other way to do this one that I think you'll find a little bit more helpful. y over y plus 3 minus 2y minus 6 over y squared minus 9. So what's this other magic bullet here? Well, when you factor the denominator over here, y over y plus 3, let's also take a look at the factorization of the numerator. So if you factor the numerator, it's 2 times what? 2 times y plus 3. Okay, so, hmm, can I cancel here? Well, everything's being multiplied. This times this, this times this. I'm not canceling into a parenthesis, so, yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks like I can cancel. So, what am I left with? I'm left with y over y plus 3 minus 2 over y plus 3. These have common denominators, so I'm left with y minus 2 over y plus 3. Wow. <laughs> A little bit less work, what do you think? Yeah. All this compared to this. I think I know which way I like. Now, of course, this is rare. <laughs> You're not going to be able to do that in too many problems. So, last one. Problem number 84, just something a little bit different to round things, round things out. 5 over 9x plus 4 over x plus 6. This is one whole term. This is one whole term. They're actually both already factored. My LCD is going to be the product of both of these terms. Try and convince yourself of that. If you list all the different factors, the different factors are a 9 and an x and an x plus 6. If you multiply them together, highest power of each is a 1. So my LCD is... 9x times x plus 6. Let's convert each of these to have that LCD. In fact, why don't you do it? Pause the video, see if you can't match my work and come up with the same answer. What I want you to do is convert to the LCD. After you converted the LCD, then add up the fractions and do any simplification. I'm not sure there's going to be simplification in this one. That's okay. 4 over x plus 6. So what am I missing here? I'm missing the x plus 6 term. So x plus 6. Here I'm missing the 9x term. Now let's put parentheses around this. So I'm missing 9x. When I multiply these together, I've got my LCD, so that's good. In the numerator, I'll distribute 5x plus 30 over, uh, let's just leave it as 9x times x plus 6. You don't have to distribute it. 9x times x plus 6, and then a 36x. Combining like terms, I get 41x plus 30 over 9x times x plus 6. Beautiful. For homework in this section, try 15 through 41, 47 through 65, and 77 through 81. That's section 7.4. Good luck. 
Have a safe, healthy, happy Thanksgiving, and go blue. Beat the Buckeyes.